You're viewing the Technology Briefing Low Fidelity Simulation by Captain Elizabeth Savage and Commander Justice Parrott. This program is part of the Management of Modeling and Simulation Systems course at the Naval Postgraduate School, part of the Healthcare Modeling and Simulation Certificate program. This briefing encompasses several aspects of Low Fidelity Simulation, or LFS. First, there'll be an introduction that talks a little bit about what healthcare simulation is and why it's important. There'll be a background about the applicability of low fidelity simulation. There'll be some aspects of healthcare simulation that must be considered when talking about any device or procedure. And then the specific objectives of this program are to talk about the state of the art of low fidelity simulation, how it relates and impacts healthcare modeling and simulation in general, and how low fidelity simulation is being used today, why it's important, and where it is headed in the future. The best way to introduce healthcare simulation is just by defining it. Healthcare simulation is the imitation or representation of one act or system by another with the purpose of education, assessment, research, and health system integration in facilitating patient safety. And patient safety is really the ultimate goal, no matter what type of device you use, but it certainly applies to low fidelity simulation, as you'll see in this presentation. Archaeological evidence shows that humans have been making imitations of anatomic structures for hundreds of years. The developments of carving and sculpture were necessary prerequisites to creating the first human simulators. One of the earliest surviving clay There are several aspects of healthcare simulation that must be considered. And all of these are considered on a spectrum. On one end you'll have a lower level, a lower status if you will, where on the other end you're the state of the art is defined as the most recent stage in the development of a product, incorporating the newest ideas and the most up-to-date features. So how would you describe the state-of-the-art of, of low-fidelity simulation? Well, low-fidelity simulation, the state-of-the-art is that it's very much like it was hundreds of years ago. It's usually thought of as a device that does not require complex electrical mechanisms to function, but it does have the modern manufacturing and engineering techniques that make it more realistic and make it more lifelike, if you will. And there's some, some examples. We have task trainers like Rosessa Annie that uh, teaches CPR and helps people. The information on this graph uh, provides a pretty good example of, of where low fidelity simulation uh, lies in relation to full human patient simulation. Now, the people who put out this graph were actually just trying to compare how the educational, um, medical educational institutions in North Dakota compare to those in Florida. And so the North Dakota people who published this said, you know, look, we're 100 percent in our task trainers and static mechanics, 100 percent of our medical organization, educational organizations have these things. 87 percent of them have human patient simulators and 47 of them So to continue talking about the status of uh, low fidelity simulation, you have to think about where it is found. And the last uh, slide showed an example that 100% of the North Dakota um, uh, educational institutions had them. But that's really the norm. So what is the relationship and impact of low fidelity simulation? Well, the relationship and impact really ties back into the aspects that I discussed in the beginning about the spectrums of uh, simulation. So low fidelity simulation meets the demands of One of the most obvious applications of simulation in healthcare is to improve the education and training of clinicians, but other purposes are also as meaningful. Education emphasizes conceptual knowledge, basic skills, and an introduction to the actual work. Simulation techniques can be applied across nearly all healthcare domains. 
Much attention on simulation is focused on technical and procedural skills applicable in the specialties of surgery, obstetrics, invasive cardiology, and other related fields. Simulation has been recreating whole patients for dynamic practices involving invasive and high-risk interventions, such as in anesthesia, critical care, and emergency medicine. Simulation is used to assess performance and competency of individual clinicians and teams. Already, clinical skills examinations utilizing standardized patient actors are being used, but when invasive and dangerous treatments need to be applied or performed, only simulators, both high and low fidelity, can stand in for the patient. In many domains, simulation techniques can be useful for addressing non-technical skills, such as communicating with patients and coworkers, or in addressing issues such as ethics or end-of-life care. Simulation has been extremely valuable in training healthcare workers for combat medical and mass casualty events. Some forms of simulation are relatively inexpensive especially the low-fidelity trainers. For example, screen or web-based programs and part-task trainers. Low cost is particularly important for early trainers of tasks and skills where routine, availability, and the possibility of repeated practice are most valuable. In situations where simulation training replaces an existing training modality, for example, as a substitution for animal laboratory, the cost is low. Simulation is a powerful training tool because it is extremely time efficient. It allows the trainer, as well as the trainee, the ability to control the schedule of practice, presentation of feedback, and introduction or suppression of environmental distractors within a safe, controlled learning environment. Low fidelity task trainers allows training to be easily designed into segments, dividing a complex task into different components. During the training and practice, the student learns each individual subtask to a pre-specified level of competency. As each subtask is mastered, another subtask is added, and both subtasks are practiced together. The addition of subtasks continues until the entire skill has been learned to proficiency. Low fidelity simulators are used to teach technical skills such as endotracheal intubation and the proper application of cricoid pressure during anesthesia induction. Low fidelity simulators, for the most part, are portable and can be taken to where the student or team are located. Some are on CD-ROM disk and the medical provider can practice materials at home prior to beginning their formal training. Doing so also allows the higher fidelity, more costly, full mission simulators to be used for more complex training issues. With sufficient practice, knowledge becomes compiled into relatively automatic skills, how to perform a task. At the highest stages of skill acquisition, learners develop tactical knowledge, which is when to perform the task, and meta-cognitive skills, which is knowing how to self-regulate one's own performance. The power of simulation is that it gives permission to fail in a safe environment so students learn from their mistakes. Until now, whenever an error was made, it was the patient who suffered. Even when there is adequate time for training the student, there is often a shortage of faculty time. With simulation, much of the mentored practice can be performed with self-directed, computer-based skills training. Also, the issue of not enough exposure to a wide variety of operative and procedural cases can be supplemented by simulation on different cases. Low fidelity simulation has also been used to train teamwork related skills to medical teams in critical care settings, for example, the operating room, labor and delivery, and the emergency room. It allows for the evaluation of leadership and team performance. Simulation in healthcare has an exciting future. The simulation community will provide more leadership in developing standards for simulation trainers, equipment, curriculum, and simulation centers. Various driving forces and implementation mechanisms
can be expected to propel simulation and medical education and health care forward. This includes, but is not limited to, professional societies, liability insurers, health care payers, and ultimately the public. The future of simulation in health care depends on the commitment and ingenuity of the health care simulation community to see that improved patient safety using the tool of simulation becomes a reality. Increased research in the application of simulation in healthcare training will be conducted and new improved benchmarks will be established as results of research findings. At the beginning of the 21st century, various driving forces rally to achieve the vision of simulation embedded in healthcare. The first movement was generated by medical and nursing educators and clinical faculty translated first through individual departments, hospitals, and professional schools, and later by professional societies, program accreditation review committees, and specialty boards. Another important driver is the public. Just as the public has long demanded safety in aviation, they are demanding safety in their health care. Ultimately, governmental regulators and non-governmental accrediting agencies, such as the Joint Commission, have institutionalized changes requiring simulation training and this assessment. Medical device regulators such as the FDA first encourage and then require the submission of data from simulators as part of the approval process for devices. Future directions include supplementing standardized patient actors with virtual patients on the internet or second life virtual worlds as well as virtual cadavers for dissection by medical students. The next generation after team training is continuity of care training. Safely transferring a patient from one team to the next, for example, from the emergency room department team to the operating room team to the critical care unit team, and so forth. The impact of simulation in the healthcare industry has gained momentum in the past decade. The impact of simulation has been and will continue to be profound and low fidelity simulators are at the core. It will encompass all aspects of education from initial screening of applicants to laboratory based training to training in the hospital to clinical preoperative planning and surgical rehearsal and preoperative warm up before a procedure. The merit of simulation has been proven in other industries and professions. The most important impact of simulation, and especially low fidelity simulation, is the improvement in patient safety. Medical practice no longer means practicing on the patient. Rather, the student or resident will be able to practice in the simulation lab or on their computer and make mistakes on the images or models and not on the patient. With simulation of procedures and various tasks, operating time decreases, efficiency increases, and errors decrease. The application of simulation in healthcare is still rather new and developing. By utilizing over 50 years of simulation from other industries and professions, as well as investing in research for new innovative approaches to education, training, and assessment, it will be possible to revolutionize medical education and healthcare that will persist for decades to come.